Is there a purpose and reason for suffering? What did our Savior say about tribulation and hardship? What lessons can we learn from Job and the Apostle Paul? For these answers and much more, stay tuned. Tradition is one of the most stubborn of barriers when it comes to the truth, and we humans are addicted by habit to tradition. Everything we do in this life is a consequence, and the consequence is most great with our walk as believers. Be prepared for some startling discoveries when you open the scriptures for yourself. I'd like to welcome you to another Discover the Truth and to say that it's a blessing to be with you. Today I want to talk about overcoming trials and tribulation. But before that, I want to share with you a very special location that we here at Discover the Truth had the opportunity to visit in a recent pilgrimage to the land of Israel. The site is Caesarea Maritima, and out of all the locations that we saw, this one was one of the most memorable. The landscape was really just incredible. It's located just north of Old Jaffa in Tel Aviv. It was built along the Mediterranean Sea by Herod the Great between 25 and 13 BCE. Archaeology has shown that it was here where Pontius Pilate governed during the time of Yahshua the Messiah. Now, two of the most important stories we find in the Bible happened right here. The first was Peter meeting Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. Before meeting Cornelius, which by the way was a first Gentile convert in Caesarea, we know that he received a vision in Joppa of a giant sheet with all kinds of unclean animals with the message of, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Now, after Peter verified three times that he had never eaten anything common or unclean, in verse 28, he understood that Yahweh, his Father in heaven, was showing him that he was not to call any man common or unclean. Truth be told, Peter had an issue with discrimination, and Yahweh was showing him in the most vivid way that he was not to show ethnic bias toward those of other nations. According to the Apostle Paul, the Messiah tore down the wall that separated Jew from Gentile, Matter of fact, in the book of Galatians, we find Paul confronting Peter for this cause. So one lesson we find from Caesarea Maritima is that we're not to show racial discrimination. Now, it was also here where Paul was imprisoned or stationed for two years before being taken to Rome to be tried. Matter of fact, the team and I got to stand on the actual harbor from where Paul would have left by ship. Out of all the apostles, the Bible shows that Paul perhaps suffered more than any other. He was also one of the greatest evangelists we find within the Word. It was through his efforts that many heard the good news for the very first time. Paul's journeys brought him all throughout the Middle East and the Mediterranean, including, as I mentioned, as far as Rome. We know that he was not only devoted, but was a man of great courage and tenacity. The simple fact was nothing was going to stop him from preaching the good news of Yahshua the Messiah. He was willing to give all for the sake of the evangel, and because of that, we know that he suffered from many trials and tribulations. You know, we can read about these in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 23. There in this passage, again, we find how Paul suffered for all that he went through. It says there in this passage, are they ministers of Messiah? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, and stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, and deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, and night and a day have I been in the deep. 
in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, and watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides those things that are without, that which comes daily upon me, the care of all the assemblies. We find here a list of the trials that Paul suffered during his ministry. He was afflicted by almost every type of possible persecution. As we see here, he was in prison, he was beat, he was stoned, he was shipwrecked, he was in constant danger, he was often cold and hungry, and beyond this, he had the concern for those in the assembly. And believe me, this last one is no easy task. As much as we think that we may suffer sometimes, we have nothing on the Apostle Paul. This guy had almost every imaginable obstacle thrown his way. But in the end, he stood his ground. He never quit, he never gave up, and he never stopped preaching the good news of Yahshua the Messiah. Can you imagine going through all these trials and not giving up on your faith? I'm sure that Paul hid his moments of frustration, but again, he kept on going realizing that the destination was worth the effort. What about us? Are we as committed to our Father in Heaven? You know, this life isn't always easy. It comes with unexpected trials and disappointments and tragedy. While the vast majority of ministers today are promising health, wealth, and prosperity now, the Bible promises something very different. Yahshua said, our Savior, that as the world hated Him, it would also hate us. The fact is, Yahweh's word never promises that this life will be easy. I can guarantee you that as believers, we're going to have issues and problems we encounter. As we'll see later, though, tribulation builds good character. Now, speaking about this, there is one man that epitomizes hardship, and that is Job. We find a mention to this man in James chapter 5, verse 11. There in James chapter 5, it says this, Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have seen of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of Yahweh. But Yahweh is very pitiful and of tender mercy. For those who may not be familiar with Job, let me give you some insight as to how this man suffered. To begin with, it's important to realize all that he had. In Job chapter 1, we find that he was a wealthy man. He had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 5,000 oxen, 500 donkeys, and many household servants. Matter of fact, the Bible says that Job was the greatest man in all the East. Or we also know that he had seven sons and three daughters. Now, before we talk about how this man suffered, I want to take a short break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We see the signs all around us. The world is changing. Mankind is changing. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come, come the seals. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat upon him was death, and the grave followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. You need to know what is prophesied for these tumultuous times by requesting our free booklet, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Call now, 573-896-1000, or request online at yrm.org. Did you know that our Father's Word contains invaluable knowledge about healthy eating? While medical science is just now beginning to understand the detriments of eating pork and other unclean animals, our Father Yahweh understood this principle in the Old Testament. He commanded Israel to abide by these laws and promised good health in return. In the book of Acts, 10 years after Yahshua's ascension, we find the Apostle Peter still following this principle. Contrary to popular belief, these laws are just as valid today as they were then. And this has been today's Fascinating Fact.
Welcome back. You know, we know from the story of Job that Yahweh allowed Satan to test this man. As a consequence, he lost his wealth, his health, and the lives of his children. You know, things were so bad for Job that at one point his own wife told him to curse Yahweh so that he could just simply die. Now, we know that Job never cursed Yahweh, even though I'm sure that he had his moments of frustration. This is why this man, above all others, epitomizes patience. Through it all, he again stayed the course, never deviating from his Father in heaven. What would happen today if we were tested like Job? Could we stay the course or would we fall by the wayside? If we lost our wealth, health, and the lives of our children, would we go on or would we forsake our faith? You know, someday we all may suffer, and if or when that day comes upon us, we're going to have to make a decision as to whether we're going to remain faithful or give it all up. We find here that happy is he that endures and continues on unto the end. Here's the one thing I can say in confidence. Yahweh's truth is worth a cost. No matter how much we suffer in this life, it's worth a destination. How can we compare 70, 80, or 90 years to a life that will never end? We know that at the end of Job that he was again blessed with wealth and more importantly a family. As Job did not know why he was suffering, listen, we too often don't know why we must suffer in this life. But no matter why or what the reason, we must never stop believing and never forsake our Father in heaven. You know the fact is that tribulation builds character, good character. We find this from the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 5 verse 3. Paul says there in the book of Romans, And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation works patience, and patience experience and experience hope. In this passage, we see a progression. We see here that tribulation builds experience, patience, and patience builds experience, and experience hope. Now, the word experience comes from the Greek dokeme. The Thayer's Greek lexicon defines this as to be approved or to have a tried character. To be found worthy as believers, we must often be tried with some form of tribulation or persecution. It's no different from maintaining good health, which requires effort and sacrifice. Trials give us an opportunity to build good character. Matter of fact, I believe that some of the best character is shaped only through tribulation. For example, Walt Disney once said this. He says, all the adversity I've had in my life, all my troubles and obstacles have strengthened me. You may not realize it when it happens, but a good kick in the teeth may be the best thing in the world for you. You know, I believe that the only way this nation would repent and return to biblical values would be through some type of hardship, like another Great Depression. If the people of this nation suffered enough, they might again realize why morality and Yahweh's word are so important to follow. But no matter what happens in this nation, as we see from Romans chapter 8, verse 35, we must never forsake the one we love, and that is our Father in heaven. Paul says here in Romans chapter 8, Who shall separate us from the love of Messiah? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or a sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Elohim, which is in Messiah Yahshua, our Master. Paul says here that nothing should remove us from the love that we have for our Father in heaven. He lists here tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, sword, and many other forms of hardship. You see, for Paul, the truth meant everything. Nothing was going to pull him away from this. What about us, though? How far does our devotion go? Are we willing to give all to be found worthy of Yahweh's calling? You know, the truth isn't easy. Many of us have suffered trials from our own families. I can't count the number of people I've spoken to that suffered persecution from a friend or family member. You know, this often happens when we make a distinction in how we worship and live. One common example is Christmas. Many people just can't fathom why we refrain from this holiday. The bottom line is this. Any worship that 
deviates from our Father's word should be avoided. Not only is Christmas absent in the Bible, if you study the origins of this day, you'll find that the church borrowed or adopted Christmas from pagan Rome. The bottom line is this, how far are we willing to go as believers? With over 18 years in the ministry, I've witnessed many people come and go from the faith. I found that it takes a very special person to remain faithful through tribulation and hardship. In my experience, most people simply don't have it. Have you ever noticed that in Yahshua's parable of the sower, that only a fraction of the seed produces good fruit? Yahshua said that many were called, but only a few chosen. I believe that success in Yahweh's kingdom is directly contingent on our devotion and ability to overcome. We either completely commit or go home because our Father in heaven is looking for the cream of the crop and will not accept anything less. And listen, this devotion doesn't happen without persecution. Well, we're going to focus on 2 Corinthians 6 verse 4, but before that, I want to take a short break and we're going to talk about, though, Paul's struggles a little bit more when we come back. So stay tuned. We'll be back in just a short minute. We see the signs all around us. The world is changing. Mankind is changing. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, and I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat upon him was death, and the grave followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. You need to know what is prophesied for these tumultuous times by requesting our free booklet, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Call now, 573-896-1000, or request online at yrm.org. Do you desire to better understand your Bible? If so, then you need the Restoration Times magazine. This insightful bi-monthly publication includes in-depth articles on proper living, prophetic trends, and biblical truth. It reveals how to have a real relationship with your Creator, what we must do to be saved, the meaning of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, and much more. Only in the RT Magazine will you get absolute clarity in Bible understanding, including how popular doctrine developed and why. You can read the Restoration Times Magazine online at restorationtimes.org. Also, for those who give a gift of $25 or more, will receive a hard copy of this amazing resource. Don't delay. Open your mind to truth like never before by going online or giving to this important work. You can donate online at donate.yrm.org or by calling 1-573-896-1000 Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 Central. Did you know that many names in the Bible have the short form of Yahweh? For example, the name Isaiah means Yah is salvation. Jeremiah meaning Yah exalts. The Yah prefix is the family name also found in the Messiah's name, Yahshua. You've been calling on the name Yahweh and may not have even known it. The popular term Hallelujah literally means praise Yah. You can find the name Yahweh in most dictionaries and encyclopedias. Check it out for yourself. This has been today's fascinating fact. Welcome back. Well, you know, we know that the apostles suffered greatly throughout their ministry. We know that Paul had his obstacles, as we've already seen through Scripture. 
But Paul was not alone. Matter of fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 4, we find that Paul too suffered, or he describes there how he and the other apostles suffered. Here's what he says. He says, But in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of Elohim, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, and labors, and watchings, and fastings, and pureness, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of Elohim, by the armor of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. As we see here, the life of an apostle wasn't easy. They were plagued with every kind of a trial and tribulation. Now, even though they suffered horribly, we see here that they remained committed. This is a lesson for all of us. Even though we all suffer from different things in this life, we must always remember that we are never forsaken. Our Father's compassion and love is never too far away. Now, before moving on, I want you to notice what Paul says again in verse 10. He says, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. This is such an important message. You see, even though the apostles were poor by the standards of this world, they were rich or wealthy by the standards of Yahweh's word. The fact is, what they possessed was the one thing that would never come to an end or fade away. And the good news is we too can achieve this same promise. You see, everything within this life will come to an end, including our own lives. The only thing that will not come to an end is the truth and promise of our Father in heaven. So when we come against trials and tribulation, as believers, we must count the cost and realize that Yahweh's kingdom is worth it. There isn't a single hardship that would justify leaving or forsaking the truth of Almighty Yahweh. It doesn't matter what or we may have or what we might be going through. The only thing that really counts is a promise from our Father in heaven. As Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. The things of this life are fleeting and transitory and will someday fade away. The promise of our Father's kingdom, though, is forever. Nothing is greater than for the promise of eternal life within Yahweh's kingdom. A few moments ago, we were talking about how tribulation builds character. We find this in concept in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 10. It says there in that passage, Therefore, I take pleasures and infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Messiah's sake. Listen to what he says. He says, for, for when I am weak, then am I strong. Paul says here that he takes pleasure in persecution. Now, why in the world would he say such a thing? He understood the principle that we are made as strong through weakness. This is why it's important that we realize that even suffering can be a blessing. We know that the Bible speaks about Paul having some type of a thorn in his flesh. Or he prayed three times that this thorn would be removed, but Yahweh never answered that prayer. He soon realized that this thorn had a purpose, and that purpose was to keep him humbled. So even though Paul suffered, his suffering in the end was a blessing. Now I know it's hard to view tribulation as something positive, but believe me when I say that in the end it can be a blessing, it can be a benefit. If you think about it, we can all give examples of how a negative event in our lives produced something positive. So as believers, it's important that we recognize again that turbulent at times can often produce blessings. The other way to view this is as suffering often has a purpose. Paul speaks about this in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Here's what Paul says in Romans 8. He says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Elohim, to them who are the called according to His purpose, for whom He did foreknow, He also predestinate, predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called, and to whom He called, them He also justified, and whom He justified, them He also glorified." Now, what's the purpose of our calling? Our purpose is to conform ourselves according to Yahweh's 
in Yahshua's image and likeness. In other words, we're to emulate our Savior in all ways, including how He lived and worshipped. What are some of the attributes of Yahshua the Messiah? Where well, He always followed His Father in heaven without compromise, and His believers were to do this, were to follow His word without compromise, without deviation. Where He also sought, never sought the limelight or self-glorification. He always looked first at the needs of others, and most importantly, came to be served and not to serve. And we find that he gave his life also for the ransom of many. These are the characteristics that we're to follow and emulate as believers. Only by becoming like Yahshua the Messiah will we, be, will we be found worthy of everlasting life. This is again our purpose and reason for being. Listen, Yahweh did not call us so that we could continue living life as before. He called us so that we could endeavor to be better than who we are today. You know, the only constant for a believer should be change. Change from who we are today into whom we should be, based on Yahweh's Word. And as we've seen, this change often requires some level of tribulation. We should never forget that tribulation builds character, and that character builds the hope of everlasting life. You know, our Savior made mention of this in the book of Matthew. He basically said that blessed are those that suffer, because they're going to find themselves in the kingdom of Yahweh. And that is the goal of every believer, to find and to achieve Yahweh's kingdom. And that's why we're here, to discover the truth, to give you insight and clarity, so that you would know how to please your Father in heaven. Well, I pray that this program has been a blessing to you, and as always, we would encourage you to watch us every week on Discover the Truth. And until next week, may Yahweh bless you. Bye-bye. For today's free offer, call now. Operators are standing by. Dial 1-573-896-1000 or write to the address on your screen. Request online by visiting one of the most extensive religious websites on the internet, yrm.org. Help support Discover the Truth. Donate by credit card by calling during regular office hours, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time, or give online, donate.yrm.org. For a one-time yearly donation of $25 or more, we would like to send you a gift, a one-year subscription to our bi-monthly Restoration Times magazine. This magazine will unlock Bible truth that will simply amaze you. For more information or to read online, visit restorationtimes.org. Join us again next week as we take you on a journey of understanding, walking the pathways of the Messiah and His apostles, exploring the Hebraic origins of the faith, and carving away man's tradition as we discover the truth.